Hello and welcome back to the final installment on this Quantum X project, which is the Uniblock. Today, for the first time ever, we're going to actually be using a build on stream. Not sure, honestly, how that's going to go. Uh, we have an OS on a drive in it already, and we're going to be running some benchmarks, looking at the thermal, seeing how it performs compared with what we would expect to see from a block on its own. We don't expect it to be radically different. Or do we? We're yet to find out. Yeah, or do, or do we? I mean, we definitely have a lot less restriction. We have no tubing. We have, you know, a very different loop to usual because, uh, you know, now generally everyone has a distro and the tubing's going, tubing's going back and forth. But let's see. So uh, we have the OS. We have a few benchmarks installed, all the utilities. I think we'll take one run of all of those now at stock settings, uh, keep a record of that, and then try some overclocking. I also have no experience with overclocking 12th gen. Just turn it up, right? Turn it up, 16 <laughs> cores, 24 threads. Let's go. <laughs> OK, so now first up, we're going to be running superposition. So uh, this is a graphics only benchmark where we'll get to see real time the temperature and the boost clocks and have an idea of what's going on with the card in its stock settings. Probably still going to boost because it will be running pretty cool. Uh, and then after it will come back in and overclock things, we're running the 1080p extreme preset. So if you're watching the video, you can check your performance versus this one. Maybe you have similar hardware or this is totally different. So yeah, with the stock settings, we got like max temperature 41 degrees and uh, average FPS 96, not bad for the stock configurations. Now, it's overclocking, right? I think now, while it's still stuck, so we don't walk through everything twice, we'll run Cinebench, see how the CPU scores, then probably run 3D Mark like one pass of Time Spy. And when we have all the stock scores, then we'll play with the CPU first, uh, because you know when we're running the CPU at a higher frequency, the GPU utilization will be better. So it's better to overclock the GPU when the CPU is already at its highest frequency. Uh, there'll probably be a bit more trial and error involved than just running. OK, so now we have a Cinebench result at 27,441 points. We didn't think to check the temperature during that, but we will have it logged during 3D Mark, so we'll know during the physics test. And we will use Cinebench as our a platform to establish the stability, basically. Yeah, and the keyboard literally doesn't work anymore. Ah, it was in Bluetooth mode. Do, 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 do. Benchmarking is surprisingly slow. I mean, not the benchmarks. Who would have thought? Not the benchmarks, they're rapid, but let's go. Two. OK, so we completed one full pass of Times by Extreme. Uh, that's the 4K version, full textures of uh, Times by. And we got a score of 10,072, almost exactly 10,000. So a nice benchmark. And we also got a really detailed analysis from 3 d Mark that we can see exactly what was going on with the temps. So the graphics card peaked around 41 degrees and pretty much stayed straight through both of the graphical tests. And you can see in the last test, which is a CPU test, that the um, CPU started to rise and hit a temperature of 63 degrees C. Uh, I believe that's a package temp, so the peak core temperature is a bit higher than that. Uh, but still, it's really not as stressful as uh, as Prime 95 or something running uh, a really intense workload. So I think we can get away with some big improvements on the benchmarks. And we can check what frequency we're hitting, because 
I mean, it's good to know how they were boosting, uh, if the GPU was on full load the entire time, which it was, uh, continuous 100%. The GPU clock speed was, uh, it started at 1815 megahertz and finished about 30 megahertz below that, so really nice. Uh, and the CPU frequency, we can see it has lots of spikes during the graphics cards test. Uh, it would be much better if that was a flat curve if it was locked at one frequency, so that's one thing that we will set up when we go back out to BIOS and try our overclock, we'll lock it to uh, full frequency and it was running five gigahertz throughout the graphics card tests. So that's really nice. Uh, and during the CPU test, it dropped to 4.9. So we have a lot of thermal headroom with all these radiators. So we will see what we can do to pick that up. Mash it. Are you an accurate clicker or do you just mash? What do you think? Is it one click to buy us or 2,000? Ah, go, go, go. Please. Ah, fun times. <laughs> It's done. Okay, so now we're back, having finished all of the overclocking. The first thing we did was uh, the CPU and then testing it in Cinebench. We thought we were gonna have a, a fixed overclock of, uh, you know, same core core as 52, and we ended up going with uh, a thermal velocity boost profile, setting a target clock of 5.4 and a base clock of 5.2 via same core cores. So we were running from 5.2 up to 5.4 in the graphics tests and through the entirety of superposition and, and kind of the start of uh, Cinebench. Uh, so that was stable, no problem with the XMP of 5200 megahertz on the RAM. Then we took to the GPU and we found we actually got slightly better clocks in superposition than we did in 3 Mark. So in superposition, it was running at uh, 2080 megahertz on the core and 21,500 megahertz on the memory. Uh, whereas in 3D Mark, it was only stable at 2050 and 21,200. Still, uh, we actually saw the biggest improvement in our 3D Mark score. So that went from 10,072 to 11,070. So perfect 10% improvement there. In Superposition, we went from a score of 12,875 to 14,050, so that gave us 9.3%. And in Cinebench, we went from 27,441 up to 29,550, so a nice increase of 7.7%. Across the board, Thermo still stayed really nice though. Yeah. Uh, I agree. Uh, we completed the task pretty nicely, I would say, and... Yeah, we were, we were seeing uh, the maximum temp we saw on the graphics card through any session was 47 degrees, which is, you know, fantastic for a, a, a 3090 at 120% power target. The memory tempers, temps were also really nice, and the CPU hit around 95 when it was running uh, when it was running Cinebench and 80 degrees C in the 3D benchmark, so great. Right. I think that uh, benchmarking was probably the longest thing we did after the cables leaving. That's actually correct, yeah, for, you're right. For us, designing water blocks is still the easy part. <laughs> uh, no, it's fantastic that we have something in a finished build and you're able to check it out and hopefully the video is followed up with Lots of sexy shots of the complete build. Uh, it was it was good fun to see it to the last stage, right? Actually, play with it for a bit, and uh, yeah, yeah. I guess we're off to play farm sim now. So thanks for joining us on the Uniblock project. Uh, let us know how you think it went. If you see this as a viable product, we can certainly 
We can certainly produce it. Uh, which hardware would you like to see it made for in the future, since we're practically at the end of uh, the lifespan for Z690 and the 30 series? So, uh, do you think we made a good choice with the Extreme and the Strix? And yeah, let us know if you would have done anything differently, if you'd like to see anything more from it. Um, any closing thoughts? How, how was the project for you? I would personally love to do another project like this uh, for different kind of hardware. So please guys, let us know in the comments and I'm excited. Right. Yep, uh, check, check back to episode one and I think you'll see some teasers of what's to come in Quantum X. And until we introduce those, see you later. See you later guys. Uh,